Now, imagine a wind farm in one of the most remote parts of Kenya, in a place called Sariman in Marsabit County. Now, it is the site of all of Nairobi County, more than 150,000 acres, although the first phase covers a quarter of that, some 40 thousand acres and by the way it also happens to be the largest wind farm in africa absolutely now the total cost of 70 billion shillings makes it the largest single private investment in kenya's history uh, more than twice uh, what is the cost of to finance the fika superhighway mm. but what began as a game changing venture may soon become a nightmare for you the consumer well jeff you actually spent some time mm -hmm on the Turkana wind power project and you brought us an amazing story. Take a look at it. Tucked away in this tiny corner of Kenya, far from the maddening crowds, lies a treasure literally waiting to be tapped. This is Marsabit County, Kenya's largest and one of its most remote counties. But it is also here that the country's largest private investment happened quite by accident. We, this is 6,000 square kilometers in total. The lake. The lake. Two backpacking tourists on holiday in Loyangalani were fascinated by the strength of winds here that used to blow their tents away each time they tried to set up camp. We first um, met these guys who had this dream of having a wind farm in this place. Uh, they told me there is a potential wind. I knew there was wind here because of, uh, I live like close to this place. But when they told me they have a potential of putting a wind farm here, it was like, what? A wind farm in the middle of this um, lava rocks. You guys must be kidding. But they weren't kidding. <laughs> Stackwell Uranimo was born and raised in this desolate corner of Kenya. So when they bring the turbines, you know that long thing? Yes. He became the local liaison for the backpackers, and they kept coming back. From 2007 all the way to 2014, when the Turkana Wind Power Project was born. Complete with money from private individuals and European banks. And this after the World Bank had rejected the proposal. Now, in case you're wondering why Marsabit County was chosen for this, and what's the big deal with all the winds? Well, experts here have calculated wind speeds to be up to 11.2 meters a second. That translates to about 40 kilometers an hour. Now that, is windy. Initial work began four years ago, but due to the remote nature of the landscape and the unforgiving terrain, the infrastructure had to be built from scratch. From roads to accommodate the wide and heavy loads, to housing for staff, and most important, security in this isolated part of Kenya. Uh, the Lektukana went for founding fathers had looked for money to put a road 204 kilometers from Laisamis to here. So that was a process that was done by a company called Civicon to build this road. After building the road, at the same time, we needed to build a village where the engineers can come and stay when they do the turbines. But the actual turbines started coming in on 2016. These wind turbines, when turned on, had the capacity to generate up to 310 megawatts of clean energy onto the national grid, a significant boost to the country's present capacity of just under 1,800 megawatts. For people who've never been to that part of, uh, to the project itself, and who are probably more familiar with the smaller wind farms around Nairobi, it's, it's difficult for them to understand the magnitude of this project. 40,000 acres, if you think about it. Nairobi CBD, as a case in point, it's 5,000 acres. That is from Westlands to Hela Selassie, between Moy Avenue and, uh, uh, and Uhuru Highway. It's 5,000 acres. So eight times of Nairobi CBD. That's the size of that project. Hmm. It is the largest single um, FDI in one project at one go. It is the largest wind farm on the entire continent, not sub-Saharan Africa, but Africa, including the Maghreb. There's one in Morocco, 
just shy of 300 megawatts. Uh, Lake Turkana is 210 megawatts. And the benefits are obvious, according to Marsabit Governor Ali Mahmoud Mohammed. It's supposed to generate income, uh, create employment opportunities for the people of this area. Uh, already a few people are working in those stations uh, from the security perspectives, from clerical, storekeepers and this kind of thing. But uh, on a larger extent and uh, going forward, we expect revenue to be generated or revenue generated to be shared both to the local communities and to the county government. Each of these turbines weighs about 23 tons and each one was constructed daily for 365 days. A massive and unimaginable accomplishment in the middle of nowhere in Africa. The Lake Turkana wind power project was touted as a game changer from the very start. At a massive cost of 70 billion shillings, not only was it supposed to transform the landscape of Marsabit County, but also the economy as well, generating some 310 megawatts of electricity into the national grid. Now here's where things get a little complicated. Construction of these massive wind turbines was on time. There's 365 of them constructed in 365 days. But guess what? Completion date was 15 months ago. Since then, not a single megawatt of electricity has been generated. Mugo Kibati is chairman of the Lake Turkana Power. His frustration and disappointment at the government not meeting its target is obvious. It hurts tremendously. Um, we, we always knew that um, uh, the transmission line needed to be completed before the uh, generating station, which is a wind farm, was completed. And uh, steps were taken to address this, uh, amongst which was to make sure that before we broke ground on the wind power plant uh, in December of 2014, the transmission line groundbreaking should have happened four months prior to that, in August of 2014, which, which it did. Um, and uh, the transmission line project ought to have been a a much faster project to complete, 14 months or so, uh, while the main project, the, the wind power project, was 20, 24 months. So we were pretty confident at the time that having given a four-month lead time to a shorter project, we would, you know, would, that was enough time. But uh, obviously complications arose, and I, I prefer to let um, Ketraco speak for themselves, uh, but I think it is in the public domain that um, the contractor that they initially uh, engaged, uh, let them down uh, considerably. Ketraco is the Kenya transmission company, the monopoly responsible for connecting the entire country's power supply onto the national grid. <laughs> Initially, Ketraco had contracted a Spanish company to build the transmission line from Sarima to Suswa, a distance of 428 kilometers. That didn't happen as the company was declared bankrupt midway into its contract. A new contract was awarded to a Chinese company. Now behind me are the technicians and engineers here at the substation, the brains of this entire Lake Turkana wind power project. 310 megawatts of electricity ready to be pumped all the way to the main grid out in Suswa, some 428 kilometers away. Now the only thing that's holding this entire project back is that they call it transmission lines or T lines. And here's the most tragic part of this story. If the transmission line is not connected by September 2018, the government of Kenya will have to pay the investors of Turkana wind power a whopping 1 billion shillings a month in what is known as payment obligations. As of September, 2017, last year, our debt obligations became due. Remember, the 70 billion shillings that I was talking about is real investors' money. Some of it is equity, some of it is debt. A significant portion is debt. And these debtors, bankers, from across the world, these are not Kenyan uh, bankers, these are bankers from across the world, different banks, you know, from Europe uh, and some from the uh, African continent, had 
the first repayment schedule in September because the understanding was by January of last year would have begun transmission and therefore have revenues and therefore eight months down the road, nine months down the road, we now be in a position to be able to start repaying our debt obligations. Now those are debt obligations are not they're non negotiable. So all the money that we have received so far has gone towards by and large covering our debt obligations and making sure that our staff were paid and operationally we're able to maintain the 40,000 acre site. And, uh, far, and it's important to remember that the investors have actually sacrificed quite a bit because they have postponed, you know, you, you talked about the ROI. The ROI has gone down because even though they are owed a certain amount of money, they have taken just a small portion of it in cash to be able to pay debt and to pay our workers and to maintain operations on, the, on, uh, on site. The rest of what they are owed, they've had to postpone payment until the transmission line comes due. One billion shillings a month, thanks to Ketraco. Translation, that bill will almost certainly be passed on to you, the consumer, in a country where electricity bills are already sky high. In this particular case, um, they dropped the ball. Right, I, I think they, they look, there's no question about it. They dropped the ball big, big time. We should never have to cost taxpayers money that they never ought to have paid. So, meaning that, as I explained to you, the savings the taxpayers would have had by having Electrocana Wind Power come online have been reduced by the fact that they've had to pay uh, fund, money that they should never have paid. So, it begs the question. Is this yet another white elephant in Kenya's checkered history of white elephant projects? You know, people think, you know, what's the use, you know? Is this another biggest um, graveyard for a wind farm? If there's no a tea line, there's, this will be a bigger graveyard. And we hope that this tea line is completed as soon as we can, because you, people can be patient for a time, but they will not always be patient for a long time. Yeah. But the chairman of Lake Turkana Wind Power insists everyone has been let down by the incompetence of a greedy and selfish monopoly. Lake Turkana has been let down, and especially the investors um, have been let down because they've lost, they've lost money. Um, but I think Kenyans have been let down uh, in general because I think this is such a, this is such a beautiful project that uh, puts Kenya on the map, that reduces the cost of energy once it comes online um, uh, to the cons Kenyan consumer. Once this project is online, the bills, of Ke most Ke most the, the Kenya power bills will come down significantly. And so Kenyans have been let down. Of course, now, as, as you see, these turbines are not running. We have cost, we have employees, we have a lot of locals who are being employed. So it's a dim generated energy. We're having energy that we, we, we can't produce. Now, whose cost is that? It's who's here to blame. And yet, this is a no-brainer that's putting Kenya and Marsabit on the global map. Kenya is on the International Renewable Energy Map because of wind, uh, electric and wind power. It is one of the most oft-cited uh, power plants globally in global conferences. It's a game changer, one, in terms of it does add 310 megawatts of much lower expense energy than we have today. So basically, when you add 310 megawatts to an 1800 megawatt grid, the average cost of power goes down. It does significantly change the Marsabit area, the Olangalani area, South Hall area. I mean, Marsabit County is the largest county in the country, a very remote part of this country. Once we are done with the project, working together with Ketraco and KPLC and RARE, we intend to supply power locally. So what's the best case, worst case scenario going forward? Best case scenario of hot commissioning, January, February uh, 2019, right? I will not hazard a guess on worst case scenario because you might hold me to it. And I'm not, I have no control <laughs> what's happening at Ketraco. The ball is solidly in the government's court. Whether it chooses to continue dropping it or whether the connection will happen in the next few months is anybody's guess. Jeff Koinange for Sunday Live in Sarima, Marsabit County.